everybody. Welcome to another edition of Libertas. This is Tonino Habana. Tonight, um, we have two very eminent guests. Uh, both of them belong to a well-known fraternity celebrating its centennial year this year. To my left is a uh, former president of the University of the Philippines. He was a, um, a banker, used to work for the Asian Development Bank. By education, he's a chemist. I'd like everyone to welcome uh, Mr. Fred Pasqual. Evening, Fred. Thank welcome you. to the show. Thank you, Tonino. And to his left is uh, uh, a lawyer. Uh, he's a property developer and also the president of the Upsilon Sigma Phi uh, Association. Good evening. 100 years is, is a very long uh, time. Uh, and I understand that your fraternity is the first fraternity in, uh, in Asia. Yes. And maybe you can tell us a bit about the history of your fraternity, Fred. Uh, well, the Upsilon Sigma Phi founder started meeting in uh, 1918, 10 years after the University of the Philippines was founded. So its uh, guiding principles as embodied in our credo were very much influenced by the mindset of the time, you know, which was uh, in terms of uh, commitment to the Philippines, uh, of uh, this uh, notion of, uh, of service, and uh, this uh, commitment to, to contributing to the country's development. So 1918 was uh, the American period, basically, and was even predating the Commonwealth government. So did the Americans have a hand in setting up this, um, this uh, association, this brotherhood, this fraternity? Well, UP was founded by Americans. And uh, there was, uh, of course, you cannot deny the influence, you know, that uh, exposure to American practices uh, has influenced or influenced uh, the way uh, education was carried out in UP and, and, and the way students uh, organized. But the uh, difference is the distinctive uh, Filipino character you know, that uh, has been uh, brought into UP as well as uh, Upsilon Sigma Phi. Um, Thad, I understand that um, your family is deeply rooted in this, uh, in this fraternity. I mean, you're like the third generation or you're the second generation member. I'm actually the second generation. Okay. Uh, my father joined, I did, and my son. So your son is also a member? Yes. Did you force your son to join? Or? No. Maybe it's something that he lives and breathes. It's something that he gets or eats in the morning, has for breakfast. It's, it's such an interesting association uh, or uh, fraternity. Um, para dun sa mga nanonood, uh, you can text your comments and questions, Mamaya. We're flashing that on, on the screen. There are so many uh, famous um, Philippine leaders that were part of or are were members of the the Upsilon, and I think uh, one of the most famous ones would be uh, President Marcos and Benigno Aquino, uh, simply because of the the conflict that they had uh, during that era. Maybe can you can you um, can you share with us? Did did that brotherhood help them in their relationship with each other, even if it, they were at odds with each other? Well, I'd always like to see Upsilon as uh, being uh, a unique and exclusive uh, organization. Yet it's diverse, you know. Certainly, we're not one of one religion or of one political belief. Uh, and even if we have these differences, the fellowship, the brotherhood that runs across the members of uh, the fraternity remains. You know, and uh, our famous, uh, or our, our, the line we love most in our uh, uh, song is that uh, the years cannot uh, break us uh, despite the ups and downs that come about when there is conflict. And conflict is bound to happen. So um, during that time when uh, President Marcos supposedly uh, visited uh, Benigno Aquino in jail, did he call him Brad? 
Yes. Yeah. They, they called yes. each other brothers. They called each other brothers, yeah. So and we've been in uh, fellowships where both are present. Were there other, uh, Thad, do you know of any other uh, members that had uh, conflicting uh, or different views uh, in, your, in your history? As yes, I do remember our brother, Doy Laurel. Okay. He was also opposing Marcos up front at the time. But in spite of that, they still call each other brother. So the respect was there? The respect was there, the, the bond uh, stays. Uh, we are producing leaders. Mm -hmm. In fact, we choose leaders to join our fraternity. So it's understandable, you know, that when you reach the ladder of the upper ranks of uh, your career, whether in politics or in other areas, the, the slots get rarer, you know, and uh, there's bound to be uh, at least two competing for maybe the single spot at the top. I understand, uh, apart from the uh, Christian leaders, you also had uh, Muslim leaders like Mamintal Tamano, Tamano yes. and Alonto, yes. uh, both senators, former senators of the That's Republic, right. and, uh, and also some members of the left. <laughs> yes, in fact, uh, one batchmate of mine actually joined the NPA and was martyred, and a command was named after him. What the Milito Glor command. Of course, that, that command is such a famous one. And another one is the, uh, another brad, uh, Mer Arce, Merardo Arce. And there was a command also named after him. So that's quite interesting because you also have uh, uh, chief generals that are also, yes, yeah. uh, were also uh, members of your fraternity. The latest yeah. one being uh, General Greg uh, Katapang. Greg Katapang, the former chief of staff. Former chief of staff. Yeah. And so, uh, they, they would be uh, after each other in the mountains, in the hills, uh, you know, looking for each other, especially against the NPA. Mm -hmm. And you, it, so that, that's uh, that's an interesting case. Um, they bring your your uh, traditions with them, but yet they have different viewpoints. Yeah. I think we're a classic case of unity in diversity. <laughs> it's hard to explain, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there is that common bond that, uh, you know, preserves the relationship. And yet, because the, the conflict is either in ideology or in political beliefs. And, and people would bound to have such differences. But where does the brotherhood, where's the common brotherhood with two uh, opposing um, ideologies or I ideas where, 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 where can you see the brotherhood aside from? I think at the personal level. At the personal level. Yes. And um, can you share with us the principles that uh, you teach your your members when they join? Uh, bang kakaiba? Well, we have the Upsilon Credo. Okay. Uh, which uh, clearly states that I cherish the sincere fellowship of my fraternity brothers because they consider me an upright, self-respecting man capable of growth and greater service to my fellow men. I appreciate the efforts of the Upsilon Sigma Phi in helping create a climate conducive to learning and progress in the University of the Philippines, to economic stability and political maturity in the Republic of the Philippines, realizing that only then can a dream of one world be attained. Okay, so maybe uh, one member will have this view of how he will attain that, and yes. another member will have another view. By the way, may nag text po dito yung microphone daw ng ni Mr. Pascual, di daw madinig sa broadcast. Pakiyan na lang. Um, okay, let's go into, um, well, one of the main issues that. Uh, that's quite common when you talk about fraternities is the, the hazing issue. And I'd like to ask um, if that happens with the uh, Upsilon at the moment or was it a practice in the past? Uh, well, <laughs> undoubtedly, it was a practice of the past. But um, lately, we have departed from that we are now are focusing more on rendering service, a deeper sense of community service for community building as well as nation building. 
Yeah, um, during the past when, when, when hazing was practiced, and I'm sure all the other fraternities um, were also practicing hazing, what, what, was, the, what was the rationale behind uh, the intent to, to hurt someone in order for him to become a brother? What was the, um, what was the psychology or the philosophy behind that? You have to hurt a brother, someone, in order for him to be part of your organization. Is that? It's not the idea. It's not to hurt. You know? mm -hmm. The idea is to have a common experience. Okay. Within a short period of time, so the experience is made intense. Okay. To a point where there could be some hurt, but that's not that the idea of why hazing is being done. So it's a kind of prepara mental preparation. I, I can imagine uh, if you join the Marines. If you join, we had yeah, several. You go through the same thing. You go through the same thing. Uh, you have to harden your yourself uh, physically and mentally in order to overcome. In this case, the hardening uh, or the, ex the joint experience that you mentioned is something that develops this type of brotherhood. Yes, it creates the bond. It creates the bond that glues everything together. Um, that is, that is actually the enigma of the fraternity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you dis, can you can you explain that further? Because the enigma is something that a lot of people don't understand, especially those who have not joined the fraternity. Because the brotherhood, we can sense it's there, but to develop that brotherhood is is what is the enigma. Yeah, I can only try to speculate. Uh, much of it has to do with maybe our primal nature, our desire to be part of a group. And in spite of whatever norms society provides, people decide to undergo knowing that they are, because they're, so they're after the acceptance. OK. <laughs> it's hard to understand. Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, hard to explain. You, you go through it. And uh, actually go through the experience. Okay. It's hard to rationalize in one's mind, but I think the psychology is there. You know, uh, the common experience, the intense experience within a short period of time, because it cannot be done through an extended period, given that students are there in the university primarily to study. You know. Okay. So. Um, We'll be going for the break, but before we go for the break, I'd like to show you this uh, short video. We're trying to promote this, uh, this area that we have in Morong Bataan. Maybe you can have some of your activities there. It's called Camp Kanawan. So we'll show the video, and then we'll go for the break. Don't go away. This is Tonino Abana with our uh, very special guest. Welcome back to Libertas, this is Tonino Abana with our special guest, Fred Pascual, former UP President and Chairman of the Upsilon Sigma Phi Alumni Association Fraternity. And Tad Liamson, Attorney Tad Liamson, who's the President of the Upsilon Sigma Phi Fraternity. They're celebrating their 100 years or centennial for the fraternity, the oldest fraternity in Asia. So, sir, may nag-text dito. Uh, Magandang gabi po. Okay lang ang fraternity pero hindi maganda ang 
nangyayari kasi pag may kakampi, nandiyan ang gulo at kahit mali ang miyembro, uh, kakampihan nila yung kasamaan. So, what do you have to comment on that? Well, um, what I can say is that it's not uh, unique in fraternities, you know, of uh, even ordinary friends, you know, would help each other, families would help each other. Uh, but that's not the main activity of fraternities, yes. you know. It's not to create trouble or, or look for uh, uh, people to fight. Uh, the fraternities were created in UP to get into its membership, those with potential leadership, to train okay. these potential leaders and give them opportunities to exercise leadership in the campus. And after graduating, support continues, you know, in the different professions that uh, the members of our fraternity are, uh, are in. We are so diverse, we have uh, broads in almost any field of endeavor, from medicine to law, from economics to social sciences, from uh, physical sciences to natural sciences, uh, mass communication, fine arts, architecture. So we swear, that's a, it's a side issue, you know, that's not the main thing. It should not distract us from the value that fraternities create and contribute to the individual and to society. Um, going back to what we were discussing during the break, the shared experience that the, the, that the students have when they join the fraternity, the shared experience that the, that the hard, that, that you know, the, they have to go through in order to be accepted as a, as a, uh, as a member. Um, you were referring to certain rites of passage as in manhood or? Yes, there is this desire of a person to be part of a group. Normally, it's a, I think it's a, it's a primal need to be part of a bigger group to enhance one's value to the community. Okay, let's talk about the community work of, uh, of your fraternity. Um, apart from um, you know, the student organizations on campus, what, what else is the Alumni Association doing um, in, to help nation building? Uh, well, let's first talk of the uh, activities of the residents. Okay, the, so uh, the residents are those that are based still in the campus. Okay. Yeah, the, those are who are uh, still active in the fraternity and uh, still enrolled in the University of the Philippines. They have uh, community projects like uh, uh, home building uh, projects that they have done in collaboration with uh, other groups. Okay, they Gawad, in Gawad, Gawad Kalinga. Kalinga. Gawad Kalinga. They, okay. They're doing that in Fairview, Barangay Fairview. They've been involved in, uh, in uh, work to promote uh, clean election. Uh, they have uh, uh, medical missions uh, in coordination with the alumni. Now the alumni themselves are, yes. especially now that we are in our centennial year, are getting engaged uh, in community work more and more given the uh, so many places that are getting devastated either by natural or man-made disasters. So. Um, uh, what are the preparations for the celebration? What, are, what do you have in store this year to celebrate your 100 years? Well, to celebrate, our concept of celebration is uh, not your, your parties. It's more of giving back to the community which has given you so much, specifically UP community. Then we try to expand the coverage from the institution, educational institution, to the community. And next to that would be the nation. So we have embarked in a number of projects, social civic projects, wherein we chose uh, our activities which are normally, nobody has access, or normally it's something that uh, very few people would dare to do. Uh, for example, this year, this January, we started in, uh, would you believe, in Basilan, in a place called Albarca. In Albarca, this is a place where there are groups of MILF, MNLF, as well as Abu Sayyaf. We dare try to make a difference in that area. What, what did you do? What did you do in Albarca? We tied up with various groups, including AFP and some local, 
local uh, residents in the area to deliver basic school equipment. Even give, we gave uh, playgrounds for the children in this area to experience how it is to be a, a child. Because they grew up, even the old ones, they grew up without even experiencing youth or their child life. They were deprived of that. So we wanted to give something, something to make a difference. We also gave them educational materials. We gave them toys for them to experience. And we even gave them a lot of treats. Like for example, we did serve uh, hamburgers. Somebody that, something that everybody would like or crave to experience. But because in these areas, normally these people, these uh, rebels, could not go to the town for fear of their security. Therefore, in their lifetime, they are deprived of that. Mm -hmm. We did not expect that it would have a tremendous effect on the psyche of these people. So, apart, but, apart from that? Yeah, apart from the external outreach, we are also pursuing a number of projects in the UP campuses where uh, we recruit members. And these are the UP Diliman, UP Manila, and UP Los Baños. Of course, our uh, flagship campus, UP Diliman, uh, is a focus of a uh, significant project which we call UP Promenade. This is a uh, pathway, you know, with uh, alcoves and gardens uh, connecting the main library and a path that connects uh, two buildings, uh, the engineering and uh, Palma Hall. And on that uh, promenade will be facilities where students can experience learning in the outdoor. There will be Wi-Fi uh, connectivity. So it's very common, you know, in the universities that I visited where the students do their studies not inside library buildings but in the outdoor. So we're providing that kind of uh, facility in uh, UP Diliman. I think what we call that is the alternative yeah, learning alternative. areas. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the fraternity is really uh, just limited to the three campuses of UP. Yes. So Diliman, Manila, and Los Baños. And wh what's the purpose for, because normally uh, the other fraternities just keep expanding everywhere as, as much as they can. But in your case, you keep it exclusive to three campuses. Yeah, well, historically, uh, provides the route for this. Uh, UP started in Manila in, uh, 20, in 1908. So Upsilon started there as well, you know, in uh, 1918. Then the campus was moved, I mean, the main campus was established in Diliman in uh, the late 40s, uh, early 50s. Uh, so the the uh, fraternity also started recruiting from uh, Diliman. Los Baños came about even before Diliman was established, and uh, we also started there. So we're, we're in the three oldest campuses you know, of, uh, of the university. And, and we, we don't want to spread out too much to, to, to the extent that we're able, that we lose control you know, over the membership. How, how do you recruit members? Can anyone become a member or you have to be selected to you join? You have to be selected. invited. You have to be invited. So to be a member. Okay. Uh, people have this strong notion, you know, that we, we, we are an elitist uh, organization. Uh, but the fact is uh, people are recruited for their potential, for leadership, for service. And uh, you must have good scholarship or uh, talent in, in, in the arts or uh, other fields. And um, um, the, does the alumni have a say on who to recruit? I mean, or is it just the, the residents that are recruiting at this, at this level? Now? The recruitment is done by the residents. Okay. They provide the fresh blood you know, to the uh, fraternity. But they go by tradition. You know? They know the types of members uh, that can uh, fit our organization. Vlad, can you um, give us a, an experience that you had that um, with the fraternity that you've or that you've taken uh, throughout your life 
Uh, yes. Maybe you can share that with yes. us. You know, uh, as a young man, before I joined, um, I did notice a difference. Before I joined, I was really a shy person. Uh, I was timid. But when I joined, it more or less developed my personality, my confidence, and it um, made me feel that I am capable of doing things because that is how Upsilon has trained me. Raising my uh, confidence level, giving us the necessary training and exposure for leadership within in campus. Then outside the university when I graduated, I did notice that I graduate into an adult community outside the university. This adult community is well placed in society, so it's easy to get exposed, to be accommodated in whatever endeavor I take. So it, yeah, that's the networking that uh, happens. You know. It's uh, people knowing people, but people knowing that the people they know are capable because they have been well selected from the very start. So there is at once uh, the, the trust, because uh, we have criteria for, for recruitment of members. Um, I'll just read the, some of the text messages. We're receiving a lot now. Bakit po ang mga universities ay may fraternity? Para saan po ito? I think you explained part of that, but mm. you can explain it if you wish again. Ang fraternity sa mahan ng mga estudyante na may atikain na nagkakatulad sa isa't isa. So pag uh, merong ganong grupo, nakakasama-sama sila at nabubuo ang isang asosasyon. Ganun nagsimula yon at ipinagpatuloy ng mga sumunod na henerasyon ng estudyante sa UP. At Pero, masasabi naman natin na dahil nakaka attract nga ng mga ibang estudyante, siguro naman tama yung ginagawa. No? So, it perpetuates itself because it has uh, it has value you know, to people who join it. Otherwise, it would have died a long time ago. How could it attract people who have, uh, you know, who at their own could be successful because they're scholars, they're, they're artists, they're, they have uh, certain talents and skills, and yet they join, you know, to contribute. Our motto is we gather light to scatter, you know. So we try to identify those that have potential of shining bright and then further hone their, uh, their, uh, their light and uh, in the end, you know, let them shine in their own spheres of influence. Um, we'll be going for the break, but before we go for the break, I'd like to ask this question and just keep it hanging. Um, you have rival fraternities in UP. There are rival fraternities uh, also in other schools. Uh, and normally these rival fraternities, they go into rumbles, especially in school. So maybe I'd like to ask your comment about that, and you can answer after a break. This is Tony Nobano. Please don't go away. Welcome back to Libertas. Uh, this is Tony Nobano with our special guests from the Upsilon Sigma Phi. Uh, alumni Association, they're the chairman and the president is with us. And before the break, I asked them about the rivalries among fraternities, especially in UP. And the, once in a while, uh, I'm sure you also experienced that when you were in school, you would have a rumble with your rival fraternity. Is that... Uh, the competitive spirit and part and parcel of fraternity life, you know, precisely because of this uh, competition, we are able to produce very good leaders of the students in the university. Uh, like many of the past university student council chairmen, many of the past editor-in-chief of the Philippine Collegian were fraternity members. You know. So rivalry is the essence of, uh, of, of trying to find the best possible candidate for an important leadership position. And sometimes, uh, you know, the rivalry could be translated into something more intense than just uh, uh, intellectual competition and people become 
uh, physical. Uh, I think it happens in other spheres of, uh, of life or in other parts of society. But do you hold but that's back not your the members? You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. In fact, uh, these days, uh, it's a rarity uh, because what we have done is to, well, it started a few years back. We have this bar, barkadahan uh, where representatives of uh, the main, almost, all, almost the main, all, the almost all fraternities now are represented. Mm -hmm. So anytime there's trouble in the campus, the alumni themselves sort things out. In fact, the closest of friends are frat men from different fraternities. Because when they yes. get out of the campus, they find out that they are the ones who have shared a common experience yeah. while uh, being a student. The rivalry mainly happens, or yeah, I would say exclusively yeah. happens on campus where there is really competition. It's part yeah. of, part of uh, campus life, you know, that you compete for positions. Uh, of, uh, of leadership. Were, were but, you, yeah. but you know, uh, when you graduate out of the university, graduate, you know what happens? When you mature, that culture of your frat and the culture of the other frats are more or less the same. There is a bond there that, does th that uh, has no more distinguishing element that uh, makes you different from the other. In fact, it, I was president of the UP Alumni Association, and I depended heavily on uh, alumni associations of fraternities because they're so organized, you know, that when you need uh, help, if you need uh, involvement, it's, it's easy to bring them But uh, For example, in government, um, um, well, the well-known fraternity now is the fraternity of uh, President Duterte from his uh, San Beda fraternity. And there were other fraternities in the past that were, you know, they, were, they had occupied uh, high government positions. Um, sometimes, especially when, when, when in the law profession, for example, you have judges who are members of the fraternity, would, that in, would, that, would they be able to influence the decision of judges if they were from the same fraternity, if you, if you represented uh, client and you were from the same fraternity or or get, get favors from government officials I think the, the bond of uh, fellowship or brotherhood in the fraternity only provides an entry point you know? mm -hmm. it opens doors it opens doors I, I will admit that you know but decisions are still based on on uh, you know merit on uh, the integrity of the individuals involved because um, yeah, it 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 it, it depends. Uh, some administration there was this fraternity that most of them <laughs> are from there, and then and now it's the, it's a perception uh, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it opens doors, and sometimes uh, more than just doors. Sometimes um, going back to your hundred years, sir, uh, what were the darkest years of your history? What, what can you consider the darkest years of Upsilon? Well, the darkest years uh, was during the major political crisis that we had, you know, mm -hmm. where uh, there was real polarization, as you have already yeah. seen from the examples we gave, you know, of yes. Brads being on two opposite ends of the political spectrum. So I would say, yeah, that would count among the darkest years. Uh, what during that time, was the uh, alumni association or the members, um, because you had opposing views from both camps, and the division was quite, quite uh, obvious. No, um, was the fraternity functioning properly, or there were factions? Because because there were two political uh, sides. Yeah, but there we had fellowships. Sti still, yeah, on yes. the personal level. At personal level, yes. you, you still would <laughs> and, the, uh, the conflict polarized everybody. But we have a mechanism to bring everybody back together. And this is what we call our fellowship. Okay. And during World War II, obviously, that was a, a, a situation where the whole brotherhood um, could unite and, and fight 
the, the Japanese at that time, right? So you had a couple of uh, members that were martyred during World War II? Ah, yes, Vinson. Yes. And uh, Wenceslao Vinson is a good example of uh, Upsilanian who was a leader when he was a student, he was a chairman of the Student Council. I think he was also the editor-in-chief of mm -hmm. the Philippine Collegian. He was uh, the youngest uh, governor. And he went back to his uh, home province of, uh, I think, Camarines Norte. Yeah, Camarines. And uh, he organized uh, one of the earliest guerrilla units, you know, that fought the Japanese. And when he was caught by the Japanese, uh, he disappeared. There's another one, if I may uh, share. Yes. This, uh, during the time of President Marcos, he got... Uh, he got incarcerated uh, because of the Nalundasan case because I, I think he was uh, accused of assassinating the rival of his father. And during that time, the president then was uh, Laurel, who is also a grad. But uh, in spite of that, on the opposite side of the fence, both of them made things easy. Marcos was able to get out from jail and even if Doy Laurel opposed him openly, the Take bonds of fellowship was still intact. Mm. Uh, I'll read this text uh, from South Cotabato, from Mr. Tupas. Good evening. Marcos and Ine were brought under uh, Upsilon, but they ended up enemies. How did this affect the organization? I think you explained that already, May. Ask your visitors if they favor the anti-hazing law. Do you favor the anti-hazing oh. law? Or I always say, you know, that there is no other way to handle this but to go by the provisions of the law. Yeah. And then um, we have another texter uh, from Bukidnon. Isang magandang gabi po. Uh, okay po ako sa mga kapa kapatiran pero ang, tinuto ang tinututulan ko kampi-kampi ang mga yan sa mga kakaaway lalo na sa politika ang tingin ko nag naging personal na interes at sana po mayroon isang batas magpaaral sa ugaling pinakamaganda anyway it's a I think, I think the question is uh, saying that uh, the fraternities, uh, you know, work together, you know, to promote their own selfish interests. Yes, I think. But as we have seen already, integrity prevails, you know. And integrity is demonstrated by the fact that people go where their belief lies, you know. That's why we end up in different uh, sides of an issue. Otherwise, you know, if there is a, a, a conscious and, and definite effort to benefit just oneself, everybody will just be on one side. But that's not the case, as we have, uh, as our history has shown. Well, um, for, for being our guest tonight, I'd like to give you these gift certificates from Vines Holistic Medical Aesthetics. It's a... Oh. Thank you. If you don't use it, you can give it to your spouses. Just, uh, well, I hope my body will thank like you. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have like four branches, one in BGC and some other places. Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for being a guest and uh, congratulations on the centennial of your uh, fraternity. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, uh, for you to mention your parting words and also if you, if you want to greet anybody Perhaps we can start with you, uh, Mr. Pascual. Well, I just want to invite all the members of our fraternity, I being the chairman of the Upsilon Sigma Phi Alumni Association, to participate in our uh, centennial celebration at PICC on the 18th of November, 2018. And I hope uh, people will understand try to understand more, you know, the value that uh, fraternities uh, have created uh, by looking at the history, for example, of our very own fraternity, the Upsilon Sigma Phi. Yeah. Uh, same here. 
uh, when we are celebrating our 100 years, we would like everybody to co-celebrate with us, if they wish. Uh, this is our celebration, celebration of our existence, how it has molded us, how it has developed us, and how it has transformed society as a whole. And I'd like to take this opportunity to play the Upsilon uh, song or the Upsilon video containing the song. Uh, before we end, let's, uh, let's uh, play it, please. Every time, everywhere, the year. 